Good evening, everybody. Finally got the uh, audio problems uh, resolved. And uh, tonight we got the great pleasure of having Mark Chaikin in with us. And I say great pleasure because here is one of the, uh, oh, uh, what did I say, not analysts, but uh, somebody that has developed a program that I would have loved to have had years ago where you can take all the indicators and put them in and get proven results from them. And his results are what are now kind of the industry standards for a lot of portfolio managers, stockbrokers, and even it's now part of the Thomson Reuters Institutional Workstation. So his stuff is what everybody watches or should watch. So anyways, with that, Mark, Welcome back to the Candlestick Forum. We're once again anxious to see your information tonight. Steve, thank you very much, and welcome, everybody. Uh, we've renamed tonight's webinar, How to Protect Your Portfolio and Make Profits in a Volatile Market. We know from the feedback we're getting from Chicken Analytics clients that everybody is concerned about the market. So I'd like you to type into your chat box, what your biggest concerns are right now. Are you concerned about whether we're in a bear market, uh, whether you should be raising cash, whether you should be buying here? Let me know what your hot buttons are so I can address them in this webinar. And I'm seeing, as with our clients, that people are concerned. The, the volatility is spooking people. Uh, we're up 50 points on the Dow. Uh, in the last few days, but there have been 200-point swings every day, including uh, wild swings in stocks like Amazon today, and we're going to address that in the webinar. So let's get started. Why Mark Chaikin? Well, I've spent 50 years on Wall Street, and I've survived 10 bear markets. Hopefully, this isn't the 11th one. I don't think it is, but uh, psychology is wounded. For 45 years, I've been tech, using technical analysis. The reason being, I got my Series 7 brokerage license the day the bear market of 1966 ended. And for two and a half years, my career as a stockbroker every day looked like an uptick until the bear market of 1969 hit, and then all hell broke loose. And I realized that fundamental analysis wasn't enough in a bear market. You needed something else, and for me, that was technical analysis. 45-year career developing technical indicators, relative strength, check in money flow. And that has enabled me to survive bear markets and have my clients prosper. I've worked with institutional investors, been mentored by some of the best hedge fund managers and conventional portfolio managers. And the bottom line is all of that is reflected in the check in power gauge rating. Those of you who know me for check in money flow, which is a technical indicator, should realize that we've moved this up a notch, as Emerald would say. We've got a fundamental indicator called the Chaikin Power Gauge, culmination of my life's work. It came out of retirement to bring this to individual investors. We've been fortunate since we started Chaikin Analytics in 1960, in 2009, to be on Fox Business and CNBC quoted in Forbes and Market Watch and Barron's. And this Saturday in the Electronic Investor column, Mike Hogan's column in Barron's, is going to be a very, very favorable article about Chaikin Analytics, the power gauge rating, the new unit investment trust that First Trust has brought out based on our methodology for selecting stocks. And we're very proud of that. But the reason that I've survived for 50 years is that I take what's what I call a reality-based approach to investing. Combining fundamentals with technicals, whether you're an options trader, because I ran an options department for five years where I combined technicals with options-related indicators, or whether you're a swing trader or investing for your 401k plan, if you use technicals along with fundamentals, you're going to have an edge. Now, before we get into the presentation, I know everybody's concerned about the market, so I thought I'd take a couple of minutes to tell you what I'm seeing in the market based on Chaikin Analytics proprietary indicators. So here's a chart of the Spider S&P 500 ETF. It's the most actively traded instrument in the U.S. markets. It's a one-year chart. 
And what you're seeing is that we made a W bottom in August and September. It was pretty scary. Market order Monday, a lot of people put in market orders on ETFs and, and really got hosed. And they're changing the rules so that some of what went on there can't happen again. And then we had a big rally up. It failed. Money flow, shaken money flow was negative. And we came back down and we tested the lows. And the cash index, we actually equaled the lows. And on the way back up in October, we picked up a lot of money flow. What does that tell you? The institutions were buying that rally. And we got right back up into that resistance level of 2100, 2130, and we couldn't break through. And the reason was really simple. Jim Cramer has been talking about the fangs, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. We used to call these the generals when I started out. General Motors, General Electric, General Instruments. These were the market leaders. And what they used to say back then was, if the generals are leading, the foot soldiers have to follow. Otherwise, the market is in trouble. And that's what we've just seen. You had, under the cover of strength, in these very large cap stocks, in the S&P 500, and also the IWM small cap Russell Index, are capitalization weighted. That means the bigger stocks have a bigger influence. So what we've seen for the last eight months since April is that the smaller stocks in the S&P, and by the way, these are still large cap stocks, have not been participating. Everybody's debating whether we're in a bear market or not because people measure a bear market as to whether the Dow or the S&P is down 20%. Well, that doesn't matter if you're in the majority of stocks in the S&P that are already down 25 to 30%. Energy has clearly been in a bear market. So what's happened subsequent to that rally up in October? Well, the market ran into resistance, and the sellers came back in. Shaken money flow went from very positive or green, meaning the institutions were buying, to red again. And we've had a waterfall decline starting with December 15th when the Fed raised rates. We haven't been able to find a bottom. People have been panicking. It's irrational. Are we in a bear market? doesn't really matter. Typically, a bear market is preceded by an inverted yield curve and we get into a recession, that's not happening right now. Could happen, but it doesn't look like it will. So what's the market afraid of? It's afraid of the price of oil and it's afraid of the Fed. And yesterday's statement from the Fed was the most confusing thing imaginable. The bottom line is the market is shaken. And people are scared and they don't know what to do been a lot of group rotation. There are very few strong stocks, as we'll see as we define them. So we're in a market climate of volatility and uncertainty. The big question a lot of people are asking is, are the small caps going to get their act together? Well, the small caps started underperforming the large caps in July. How do we know that? We've got an indicator called relative strength. And we compare the IWM, Russell 2000 small cap index to the spiders. And we see that in July, it went from green to red. We have a name for that called a personality change. And we'll show you some examples with individual stocks. So since July, small cap stocks have been a bad place to be. They also made a W bottom, but they had a weak rally. They didn't even come close to their old highs. And then they definitively broke to new lows, and we've had a very weak rally here in the last few days with negative shake in money flow. So small caps are even worse than big caps. They're so bad that in our weekly market letter called Market Insights on January 3rd, our bearish stock of the week was an ETF, the IWM. And using our new options module called Options Play, we found a bearish vertical put spread with a February expiration, the IWM was 112. It's dropped under 100. It's down more than 15% since that recommendation. And that put trade worked out beautifully, better than a 200% profit. It worked out quickly. And, it, and with the IWM at a new low, it's even more profitable. So we backed up our 
chart analysis with a recommendation. And that's what we do at Chaikin. We stand behind our analysis and we'll make recommendations on our weekly market letter. Now, caveat, we're not registered with any state or federal agency. So these are informational ideas, not recommendations. So what do we do, what do, we do now? What's impeding investors from dealing with the market and all of this volatility and the talking heads on CNBC who are talking about bear markets and conflicting opinions. Well, our biggest problem is information overload. Now, normally information overload means Yahoo Finance, Google Finance, Finviz, talking heads, market letter writers, and so forth. In this current market, Information overload means the scare headlines you're seeing in the newspapers and on CNBC. You've got to have a way in a volatile market to account and overcome information overload. And our solution is checking analytics for both iPad and desktop. The reason is it helps you cut through the clutter and it enables you to focus. It strips away all the noise. In order to manage a portfolio or a good trading book, you can't be influenced by CNBC. Turn off the sound. If you want to watch CNBC, just watch the numbers or go to Bloomberg where they don't have these wild recommendations. I'm sure Steve Bigelow would call them wild ass analysts because Steve has a saucy tongue sometimes, which I love. Chaken Analytics enables you to focus. And when you focus on the right things, you get conviction, and that leads to profits. So volatile markets demand a disciplined methodology. If you're just dealing with emotions and headline risk, you're not going to do well in a volatile market. We're not even going to call it a bear market. Let's just call it a volatile market. So we've got a discipline methodology in Chaikin that's embedded in this pyramid. At the top is the power gauge rating. It's the 20-factor fundamental model that does the heavy lifting. That's part of my reality-based approach to investing. We also feel very strongly about industry and sector rankings because they put the wind at your back, as you'll see in a minute. At the bottom of this discipline methodology that's embedded in this pyramid are two technical indicators only. Check in money flow, which many of you know, it's on all the brokerage platforms online, and Reuters and Bloomberg and stockcharts.com, and check in relative strength. Check in relative strength, absolutely critical when you combine it with the fundamental power gauge rating, and you'll see why in a minute. And check in buy and sell signals. Now, Steve Bigelow has some great tools, candlestick charts, absolutely critical for timing, and I love his line, this eight period exponential average. It's his secret sauce. I've been using it for eight years before I even met Steve. Powerful way to stay on the right side of the market. So you've got the Chaikin methodology, very compatible with the candlestick work that Steve Bigelow does, and particularly that wonderful line he has, which is an eight period exponential that keeps you on the right side of the market. Now, how do you convert this into profits? Well, let's start by looking at the power gauge rating so you understand what it is and why it can help you. It's a very simple gauge. The display looks like the gas gauge on your car. But I've said many times on webinars, so I apologize if you've been on these before, that the Chaikin power gauge is simple, but it's not simplistic. It's like a Chevrolet with a Ferrari engine under the hood. And the reason I can say that with conviction is that it's based on 20 factors grouped into four components. And these are the 20 factors that institutional investors look at every day. This is what I learned working with institutional clients, having been mentored by some of the smartest, most successful investors on Wall Street who I worked with, and then by the clients that I had. This model works because it's based on the way Wall Street works. So financial metrics are what a value investor like a Warren Buffett would look at. They're 35% of the model, free cash flow, 
price to book, return on equity, debt equity ratio, and price to sales. The more volatile factors are based on analysts and earnings surprises. We all know that in earnings season, stocks are volatile. We're going to see a dramatic example of that at the end of the webinar. So please stay around. Not only do we have a special offer for you, but we're going to give you the most compelling evidence that you need Chaikin an Analytics in a volatile market. And it just happened this afternoon after the close. So earnings surprise is what happens when a company reports better or worse earnings than expected by Wall Street analysts. It leads to earnings estimate revisions. And that's the short-term driver of stock price movement, as we'll see in a minute. Leads analysts to change their estimates. Now, some of the other factors we look at are short interest, because the short sellers are very smart, they do great research, and insider buying. When you add it all up, it's an eclectic model. It's 85% fundamental. It's only 15% technical. The technicals keep the model honest. So the power gauge rating is like a GPS. It's your friend in a volatile market. And it's important to believe that the power gauge works to come away from this webinar with confidence that there is a discipline methodology that you can embrace that can help you walk through the minefields of a volatile market, bull, bear, or neutral. So how is the power gauge rating done? Well, this is the performance of the power gauge from inception. It includes back-tested results and five years of real-time performance. The average stock in the Russell 3000 up 20% a year. The average very bullish stock in a period when the Russell was up about 8%. The average bearish stock was down in that period. It incorporates two and a half bear markets. 2000, 2008, 2011 was down 20%. And in the current environment, energy and many of the average stocks are down 20 to 30%. And the biggest mutual funds are down 25 to 50%. Some of the premier mutual funds are down 50%. Dodge and Cox, PIMCO. These are household names, great performance records. So it doesn't matter what the label is. You need a way to differentiate stocks that are likely to go up and stocks that are vulnerable. Now, the next slide shows you what the power gauge did in 2015. And the key takeaway is that the average very bearer stock was down 17% in the Russell 3000. These are the... Kinder Morgans of the world, the Range Resources, Wynn Resorts, Union Pacific, CSX, Kansas City Southern. There's a pattern here. These are volatile stocks and conservative stocks, dividend-paying stocks and companies with no earnings. The power gauge rating is an eclectic model. It has the ability to differentiate and identify these very bearish stocks. And I call these stocks landmines. Why? Because they can blow up and destroy your portfolio. Very bullish stocks take care of themselves. You've got to avoid the very bearish stocks. If you're a trader, an options trader, or a swing trader, those are great put candidates or short sale candidates, but you do not want to be long a stock with a very bearish power gauge rating. You're bucking the fundamentals and you never win. So another proof point before we get into the examples, is a partnership we have with NASDAQ that commenced on April 1st of 2014. We created three NASDAQ Chaikin Power Indexes, large cap, small cap, and dividends. The proviso was they could only be rebalanced once a year, so 12-month buy and hold. Now, not many people can tell you where a stock is going to be 12 months from now, and quite honestly, I was a little bit daunted by the task of creating these portfolios. Well, we all know what happened to small cap stocks. We just looked at the IWM. The NASDAQ Chaikin Small Cap Index is 225 stocks out of the 1,500. It's sort of like the Russell 2000. In this 21-month period through April of 14 through year end with one rebalance, 
the NASDAQ index itself was down 3.5%, and the NASDAQ shaken index was up 4.5%. And very few stocks out of those 215 had the power gauge go bearish. That's what these power bars at the bottom of the screen show you. Out of 225 stocks, only 10 have gone bearish since April 1st of 15. That's pretty amazing, don't you think? Whereas in the Russell 2000, there are 433 stocks, 53 stocks, over 23% of the index has bearish ratings. So a managed portfolio, buy and hold, based on the power gauge methodology, has been up when small caps have been down. So, so much for the proof points. Let's give you some real world examples. We've developed two patterns, classic chicken bulls and classic chicken bears. Classic chicken bull is very simple, has three components, a bullish power gauge rating, outperforming the market with strong chicken money flow, which means that the institutions are buying the stock. So Activision Blizzard is our poster child. It was the fourth best performing stock in the S&P 500 in 2015. At the bottom of this one-year chart is the power gauge rating. It turned bullish in January of 15 with Activision at about $21 a share on its way to 40. And along the way, roughly in late February, Activision started outperforming the market. And look at the shake and money flow, big mounds of green. I once asked someone, what does that look like to you? And they said, looks like Quasimodo with a green cape. Well, when you see that, it means the institutions are aggressively buying the stock. Now, 100 years ago, Richard Wyckoff developed an idealized way that stocks go up. That's exactly what Southwest Air looked like in 2014 and Skyworks. You break out of a base, you rally up, you pull back. It's a classic pattern. It still works today, 100 years later. The problem is very few stocks look like this today. But keep in mind this Wyckoff pattern when we come out of this basing period that we're in because that's what bullish stocks are going to look like and Chaikin's going to find them for you. Now, the classic bears are critical because you want to avoid these stocks. So turn it on its head. Bearish power gauge rating, weak performance relative to the market. Check and money flow is red, not green, telling you the institutions are selling the stock. And Kinder Morgan is our poster child. For, for a year in these webinars, we use Wynn Resorts. I know Steve Bigelow was bearish on Wynn many times. Casino stocks have been deadly. Las Vegas Sands yesterday reported terrible earnings. But let's look at Kinder Morgan. How could Chaikin have helped you? Well, the power gauge has been bearish off and on all year. But in May, it turned decisively bearish with Kinder Morgan at 40. A lot of people, sadly, were seduced by this huge dividend yield. A lot of hype around the stock. Barron's was bearish. The power gauge was bearish. And then in May the relative strength went from green to red. At that point, we like to say the market agreed with the model. The reason that's important is no matter how good your fundamental research is, and, and believe me, fundamentals drive the stock market, whether you're doing conventional research, whether you're listening to research from brokerage firms or barons or a quant model like the Chaikin Power Gauge, unless the market agrees with you, you're not going to make money. When the market agrees with you, you get price acceleration, in this case, in a bearish stock, to the downside. And along the way, we got sell signals, six pairs of buy and sell signals in Chaikin Analytics. You could use something as simple as breaking that eight-period exponential. In fact, one of our averages keys off that, one of our signals, rather. And I've circled the last sell signal in Kinder Morgan. Now, why do you think I did that? The reason is when a stock is down from 45 to 25, a lot of people say, well, I'm not going to short that stock. It's already down almost 
Well, the fact is it's never too late to short a stock when everything is lined up or buy a put option. And if back in November you had followed that overbought sell signal, it's really simple. I learned this from Larry Williams, who's been a mentor to me beginning of my career, through his books, by the way, not personally. When you get a sell signal on a stock that's got a bearish power gauge rating, underperforming the market, and negative check in money flow, it's a perfect setup. And you've got to follow those setups because you never know where the bottom is. And, and we're not even in a bear market, although we're in a bear market for energy. Now, Warren Buffett famously said, they don't call balls and strikes on Wall Street. Now, what did he mean by that? What he went was, you don't have to swing at every pitch. You can wait for the fat pitch. This was a fat pitch. Everything was lined up on the downside. Now, Warren Buffett, as far as we know, doesn't go short, but if he did, he would have been shorting Kinder Morgan. Now, here's the Wyckoff pattern in reverse. This is the distribution pattern that Wyckoff idealized 90 years ago. <coughs> Excuse me. Sadly, too many stocks look like this today. Stocks like Netflix are breaking down. Former favorites. We're going to see the last one on the last two slides of the webinar. I'm not going to tip my hand on this one. When you see breakdowns like this, run the other way or go short on these little throwback rallies. Candlesticks are wonderful to identify these. If you want to be conservative, wait till it breaks that special line of Steve's, the eight period exponential, then buy your puts and go short. But when you see patterns like this, you know that those stocks are in markdown phase, breakdown phase, distribution phase. Avoid them like the plague. And sadly, there are too many of them right now. Now, how do you find these stocks in Chaken? Well, two ways to find them. We have Chaken hot lists, which I show here on the screen. And we have featured bulls and bears. And we also have power gauge hot lists. In this case, we show you all the bullish stocks and all the stocks that turn bullish or bearish this week. We also have signals and indicator lists, earnings hot lists, very important. We're going to end the webinar with how you make money during earnings season. Instead of being spooked by the volatility, take advantage of it. Or you can use our new stock screener, which puts you in the driver's seat. You can very quickly, I mean within 20 seconds, filter down the Russell 3000 to just those stocks that meet your criteria. Now, when I ran this screen about a week ago, I got mostly utility stocks. Bullish power gauge rating, strong relative strength, strong money flow, everything we've been talking about. Now, that was not a good thing because when utility stocks are the only things you can get out of a good screen. That means the market's in defensive mode, scared, looking for shelter in a storm. But the bottom line is you can find these names in Chaken very quickly, very easily. It's like done-for-you research. With the stock screener, you've got to do a tiny bit of work, but it customizes it to just what you want. If you only want small cap value stocks, you can find them. If you only want stocks in strong industry groups or in a particular sector, you can find the best of the best or the worst of the worst. Now, we have a couple of patterns that I think are important. I think visuals are really important. Numbers overwhelm me. I happen to be good with numbers, but I know that most people get overwhelmed by numbers. Investors Business Daily is an example of that. Great resource, but tons of numbers. Finviz, the same thing, probably the best financial website, but it's all these ratios and numbers. You can't make sense out of that, but you can make sense out of visuals. So we've created a visual we call the Dynamic Duo. Check in power gauge rating and check in relative strength. It finds big winners and losers. However, one thing to be aware of, relative strength stands alone as a bullish or bearish indicator. The reason being momentum stocks like Tesla, LinkedIn, Amazon, Netflix, with very over 
extended valuations and fundamentals can very often go to the moon. The 3D printing stocks did before they fell back down to earth. So you can make money as a trader in these high momentum stocks, but if the power gauge is not supporting them, you're on a high wire without a safety net. And when something goes wrong, as it did today with a big name stock, you're going to get bruised as you fall off that high wire. But Superior returns come from stocks that outperform the market, particularly when this dynamic duo is in play. So let's look at two examples. In the solar energy group, solar energy is the way of the future. Everybody acknowledges that. Big climate change conference in Paris reached an agreement. Solar energy is the answer. Non-carbon fuels. Sorry, Steve. The Coal industry in Kentucky is probably going to suffer a big hit. First Solar is the blue chip in the industry. Very little debt, a lot of cash on the balance sheet. Most importantly, bullish power gauge rating. It was bearish in the spring, and the stock dropped from, oh, 62 all the way down to 42, $40. But then the power gauge turned bullish. But when it did, the stock was still underperforming the market. Now look at that Wyckoff pattern. Out of that base, you broke out. Power gauge turned decisively bullish right here at the bottom in October. And then a couple of weeks later, First Solar started outperforming the market. That was in the 50-53 area. My wife, Sandy, who follows this discipline religiously, never traded stocks before till three years ago, doesn't complicate it, just believes in the discipline, follows it. She bought the stock at 53. It ran up all the way to 72 just three weeks ago. Now, why did it go to 72? Goldman Sachs recommended it with a price target of $100 a share. Now, if you were using Chaikin, you didn't need to wait for Goldman Sachs at 65. You would have been buying it at 53. But then when it pulled back with the market, it pulled back dramatically. The pendulum swung all the way back the other way, and the stock traded down to 56.54. Guess what Sandy did? She bought more at 58. If Sandy can do it, you can do it. She gives webinars that are even more convincing than mine, novice to knowledgeable, fearless investing. But the reason she's successful is she doesn't overthink it. She believes in the methodology. That's why I started the webinar by saying, in a volatile market, you need a disciplined methodology. Otherwise, you're like a chip on the wave, a leaf in the wind. You're going to get blown from pillar to post. A lot of trite phrases, but they mean something. So what has First Solar done? Well, it gave a buy signal, and it, and it rallied from 56.54 all the way up to 68 the other day. And it's pulled back, but it hasn't pulled back very much. When I pulled this chart early today, 65 and change. If you believe in the methodology, you'll have the confidence, the conviction, and the focus to buy it on those dips. Very important. Now let's look at the dynamic duo on the downside. Same industry group, Sun Edison. Two of the biggest hedge funds are caught on the wrong side of the stock. They're long the stock. If you're following the Chaikin methodology, look where you would have gotten the indication to sell the stock and go short. Power gauge went bearish in mid-July, and then the stock broke down. It was at around 28 to 30, and it started underperforming the market. At that point, the dynamic duo was weak. Chaikin money flow was weak. The market agreed with the model. And if you are bottom fishing in Sun Edison all the way down because you follow the guru theory that if you mirror the hedge funds, you're going to make money, you would have gotten destroyed, just like Bill Ackman and Einhorn have. So which would you rather own? Would you rather own First Solar that's making new highs and rallies beautifully, or Sun Edison, which has all sorts of debt, no earnings, funky accounting, don't want to call them criminal, but they're very aggressive in how they get rid of their debt 
and the market agreeing with the model. So this is the dynamic duo at work. The next pattern that we think is really important, and it's actually the key to making and keeping profits, is spotting personality changes. Now, we defer a, a personality change as a stock that goes from outperforming the market to underperforming the market. And unless you can spot these changes, you're going to have your feet in cement staying with a stock like Sun Edison or Kinder Morgan, not recognizing that the world is changing under your feet. Now, you also get bullish personality changes. But as a trader, the worst thing that can happen to you is to be on the wrong side of that door when Jack Nicholson's coming through with the axe. You want to be on the right side of stocks. And the key to spotting that is watching the relative strength. So here are two examples. Here's Lidos, which is in the aerospace software business, a lot of government contracts. It had been underperforming the market in a base. This is a classic Wyckoff pattern. Power gauge went bullish in August, and then it started outperforming the market. And look at that shake in money flow. While it was going sideways, the institutions were buying the stock with both hands, as they say, on the floor. And eventually it broke out, and you got price acceleration to the upside. So there's a bullish personality change. If you didn't recognize it, you missed a big opportunity. You might have even been short the stock. Huge money flow, new high, pullback, and then a big spike up on a positive earnings report. Now checking money flow comes into play. When a stock makes a new high, this is a tip that we've taught Wall Street professionals for 35 years because I created checking money flow in 1981. When this stock made a new high just two weeks ago, the money flow should have been green, not red. That was your tip-off. People very often ask us, well, you're great at finding good stocks to buy or short, but if I buy a stock, how do I know when to sell it? This is one of the ways that you know to sell the stock. If it makes a new high, spikes up to the upper volatility band, and money flow stays negative, that's an exit signal. Now, how many of you get this? Do you understand what we're doing here? It, this has predictive value. It's the only technical indicator I know that has predictive value. This pattern works, just like the accumulations pattern works. So if you, if you get this, if I'm resonating with you, please give me some love and type a Y into the question box, the chat box, so I know that we're getting through to you. Because it's really important to me that I convey this in a way that you understand it. And I see that we are getting a lot of positive responses, so that's good love for me. Makes me want to finish the webinar. Now, here's a stock, just the reverse, bearish personality change, Union Pacific. This could have been any of the railroad stocks. Could have been CSX, Kansas City Southern, Norfolk and Southern, or sadly, Berkshire Hathaway, which we happen to like based on the power gauge, but they happen to own Burlington Northern. If they didn't own that railroad, Stock would probably be 10 to 15% higher, but all the rails are making new lows, and Union Pacific came out with a horrible earning statement and guidance, and the stock made new lows. And this is a blue chip stock. Great yield, over 3% in this current market environment. Started underperforming the market back in March when it was trading above 110. Power gauge turned bearish in May at 105. You want to avoid stocks like this, but you need to know about them. When the personality change is taking place, you want to readjust your thinking about the stock up and down. Now, the third indicator we're going to talk about that works in conjunction with the power gauge, we've already given you a sneak preview, 
taken money flow in a particular pattern we call stealth buying and selling. Institutions have big orders. They're paranoid about you knowing or the hedge funds knowing what they're doing. So they execute them over a few days. That's why when you get a negative earnings surprise, typically the selling lasts two to three days. Same thing on the buy opposite side. And so we've detected a pattern that we've been teaching institutional investors for the last 35 years. And here's an example of it. We saw it with Lidos, and now here's another example of it with Red Hat, the people who make the open source Unix code. Very heavy accumulation. Power gauge was spotty. It was never bearish in here since July, but bullish or neutral, but the company was outperforming the market. Look at the accumulation going on. Even when the stock dropped back down and gave us a buy signal back in November, money flow stayed positive on that dip and the subsequent dip. But when the stock reported better than expected earnings and spiked up to a new high at about the 53 level, look at the money flow. You started with stealth accumulation, but the money flow was negative at the new high. The exact same pattern as Lidos. They repeat over and over again, and that was your spot to sell the stock. Now look what's happened. Money flow has stayed negative. It's underperforming the market. You've gotten a relative strength breakdown. It's gone all the way from 53.50, I'm sorry, 83.50 to 68. You need a sidestep moves like that. Checking money flow can help you do it. Now here's another example in the retail sector. The XRT ETF has been a disaster. And Nordstrom's had stealth distribution going on. Now, what do we mean by that? Between June and August, the stock made a series of peaks, got overbought, and the money flow never once turned positive. Chaken money flow looks back over 21 days. It's what I'm known for. What I'd really like you to come away with is that Chaken money flow is a tool but the Chaikin power gauge rating is indispensable. It's your GPS. But look at stealth distribution at play. Every time it got overbought, we've got an overbought, oversold indicator cross between an MACD and a stochastic, proprietary, but powerful. Every time it got overbought, the money flow stayed red, never went green. And then they reported bearish earnings twice in a row and the stock tumbled from the 75 level all the way down to 45. Check in money flow when you detect this pattern and it's available on stockcharts.com. You don't have to take us up on our special offer at the end, but I wish you would because we combine everything in one spot. That's how we defeat information overload. You don't have to jump around to Yahoo Finance, Finviz, Stock Charts, Google. It's all in one place with the power gauge rating, which you can't get anywhere else. So here's a real-time example of stealth distribution at play. Twitter, bad earnings report in April started a downward roller coaster. But amazingly, the stock went sideways for three months until the next earnings report. Wall Street is ever hopeful. After that initial two to three days of selling, the stock went sideways as if nothing was wrong. But look at the check in money flow. Every time it rallied up, money flow stayed negative. You got a bearish personality change and a bearish power gauge rating. The stock was about 37. And everything that we do was telling you that this stock was going to break down. And sure enough, bearish earnings reports rallies along the way, but the power gauge never wavered. The stock continued to underperform the market, and it's making new lows as we speak on a day when the market was up. It was down 1.5%. Trading in the teens, you could have been out of it at 35. You could have been short the stock. And here again, it's never too late to short a stock. These last three sell signals came in the 23 to 25 area. Now, a lot of people might have said, wow, 
Twitter's down from 55 to 25. I'm not going to go short that stock. I'm not going to buy a put option. It's never too late. In a bear market, stocks like Twitter will drop 95%. They did that in 2000. The Internet stocks, they did it in 08. They'll do it again if we ever get in a bear market. But even in a neutral market, choppy, volatile market, stocks like Twitter are down 50%. And you can spot them with these patterns. Now, we also told you that group strength is important and sector strength. Why is industry group strength important? Because studies from Zacks, Investors Business Daily, Standard & Poor's have documented the fact that you want to focus your long investments on strong sectors and strong industry groups because they give you a tailwind. They give you an edge. The power gauge gives you an edge. Shaken money flow gives you an edge. Relative strength and group strength also gives you an edge. It equates to long profits. The strongest stocks and the strong industry groups based on the power gauge, are the big winners. On the other hand, if you're bottom fishing in weak groups, weak sectors, you're bucking headwinds. You're driving the wrong way on a one-way street, trying to paddle that canoe upstream instead of going with the current. Headwinds equals short opportunities. So let's look at a couple of examples. Not going to look at too much of them. In our weekly Market Insights newsletter, comes out on Sunday in your inbox. We identify three strong and weak industry groups. Last week, all the strong industry groups were utilities. That said to me, defensive market, defensive market. People are nervous, so they're looking for safe havens. Now, some of these stocks have good chart patterns. As you'll see, they're going up. ATO, ATBO, in the gas distribution, fabulous stock, Entergy. Do I really want to be long utilities from a trader? Probably not. Never have, never will. There's nice yields there. But when defensive stocks, consumer staples, utilities are the strongest stocks in the market, that's a warning sign. Now, what were the weakest industry groups? Well, it's the old Gang again, energy stocks, oil machinery and services, chemicals, transportation stocks like Union Pacific, which we've already looked at, Schlumberger, which has had a big rally here, but still bearish, Halliburton. So beware of the rallies that are triggered by short selling and a couple of earnings reports that people view positively that may not be really positive. So how do we help you find them? Well, we have a list manager in Chaikin, as we've mentioned, and we analyze, I like to analyze, the sector spider ETFs. I know a lot of you trade them. If you trade them, put a big S up for spider sectors. And as we normally see, a lot of swing traders, options traders, Love the sector spider, sector ETF. So you drill down, and what do you find? Well, you find a listing of the nine select spider sector ETFs. They carve the S&P 500 up into nine sectors. And right at the top of the pack, because we rank them by power gauge rating, not by price momentum like everyone else does. This is another look under the hood. How many stocks in a sector have bullish versus bearish power gauge ratings. Well, in the electric utility sector, 12, or utilities in general, 12 bullish, no bearish. Am I interested in buying those? Not really. But down at the bottom of the stocks, you need to avoid in the energy and materials sector. After a year and a half, you still have a preponderance of bearish power gauge ratings. What that means is you can buy a stock like Entergy, which is strong technically in the strong electric utility industry that's breaking out of a base. That's a classic Wyckoff base, by the way. With bullish money flow, it's starting to outperform the market. Stock gave a buy signal. It was up 1.5% today, but it's a safe haven for money. You're not going to get rich 
an entity like you would in a Love or a Southwest, uh, a Southwest Air or Skyworks in 14 or First Solar. But if you want to park money with a good yield, almost 5%, in a stock with bullish credentials where the institutions are buying it, not a bad place to park money if you don't want to keep it in cash. But you want to avoid the XLE because that had the relative strength term bearish back in late August of 14. It's almost two years later, still bearish, still underperforming the market. Don't get sucked into rallies and in energy stocks. It ain't over yet, guys. How do I know that? Because the power gauges are still bearish. So here's Schlumberger. Power gauge was bearish all year, back into 14 as well, in the 80 to 90 area on the way to 60. And now you're getting a big reflex rally. Well, you had that before. You had one here in September through October. The stock rallied from 65 to 80. Don't get sucked in. Power gauge is bearish, underperforming the market. Schlumberger was up 6% earlier today. Technicals are still weak. Industry is weak. It's run up right to our resistance line. That's our long-term double smooth 200-day exponential average. We call it the shaken trend. Don't be fooled. Don't get sucked in. Don't bottom fish. It's not worth the risk. It's not worth the sleepless nights. Don't catch a falling knife. Let someone else make that money because inevitably until something changes and still it until it starts outperforming the market and the institutions stop selling it, it's no place for your money. Same thing with the material stocks, Freeport MacMoran. CEO is now resigned. Stocks down from 23 high in May to under four bucks. Power gauge has been bearish. It's been underperforming the market. Look at the money flow. Institutions, anytime they see a bid, sell the stock, and it's never too late to sell a stock where everything's lined up in a negative way. So here's sell signals at 11 and $8, down from 24 and The stock was much higher in the previous year. Well, you feel pretty smart if you're shorting a stock or buying a put option on a stock at 10 or 8 when it goes to 3 and a half. And the CEO resigns, long-standing. So this works, guys. Sector analysis, top-down analysis, that's the way the big institutions do it. So we started out the webinar by talking about bottom-up analysis. What is that? Well, it's picking individual stocks based on the power gauge, relative strength, and money flow. Top-down analysis says, where's the best potential? What sectors have it? So right now it's utilities financial stocks and technology, but only utilities have more bullish than bearish power gauge ratings, and you still want to avoid energy, industrials, and materials. The only good industrial stocks in power gauge land are in the aerospace group like General Dynamics. So here is the next piece of the Chaikin methodology, buy and sell signals, six pairs of them, fully disclosed on our website. We looked at the oversold and buy signals, overbought sells. We also have a relative strength sell signal, very powerful. We'll see an example of that in a minute. So to trade more profitably, follow the signals, whether it's Steve Bigelow's candlestick signals and the wonderful short-term eight period exponential line, the magic line. So our example here is Verizon. <clears throat> Verizon had been underperforming the market. The power gauge was bearish in March and April, right near the top. It's been neutral ever since, and these sell signals work, but look what happened. The power gauge turned bullish in mid-January, right after the stock started outperforming the market. There's a big yield on this stock, 5% yield. And there was a buy signal just five days ago. So in a pretty volatile market, this stock has had a huge move. 43.5 up to 49.5. It's a big move. 
if you have the confidence and the discipline and the focus to trade on the signals, you're going to win more than you're going to lose, and it's going to be consistent profit. So any discipline that's based on proven analytics gives you conviction, and it's a lot better than trading on your emotions. Now, on the downside, we're going to use Macy's as an example. In that weak retail sector, just like Nordstrom's, look at those wonderful overbought sell signals. New eight-day high with a bearish power gauge and an overbought condition. Thank you, Larry Williams. Two out of three of those will work. They're great swing trading signals. They last for 5 to 15 days. In a down market, they'll last 20 days. Up market, they'll last 5 to 10. But they worked on the upside here when the stock was bullish, and then on the downside, they've been wonderful short sale signals. This one came ahead of the earnings report in November. Stock was around $50 on its way to 35 Follow the discipline. It's better than trading on emotions, and you're going to make money consistently. Most of these signals work two out of three times, and the reason is they're either supported by the power gauge or relative strength. So they give the signals that edge. Bearish signal like this needs a bearish power gauge. So that's saying you're shorting a stock or buying puts on a stock where the fundamentals are weak. And then if the relative strength and money flow are there, again, it's Warren Buffett's fat pitch. Now, where do you find these stocks? Well, we've got an alerts dashboard in our iPad app and on our desktop app. It's a browser-based app. So this was my dashboard this morning coming into the market. Buy signals on Tyson's Food, Dry DRY, which is Darden Restaurants, Johnson & Johnson, and Teva. But look over on the sell side. Sells on LinkedIn, Netflix, SolarCity. And Amazon, a money flow sell on Amazon. We're going to get to Amazon later in the webinar. So we got this testimonial, gold mine of profitable ideas. In the first two days of using Chaken Analytics, I paid more than paid for my annual subscription. In my second week, I made $15,600 on three earnings ideas. I like the combination of several indicators on one page and the clear, easy-to-follow signals it gives. I'd highly recommend the system to any investors who want to save time and improve their returns. I consider it a gold mine of profitable ideas, and this guy's a professional portfolio manager. RDS, thank you for the testimonial. So now let's talk about defense. Defense wins football games. It also wins in the market. When I moved to Philadelphia in 2006, they were Super Bowl contenders, the Eagles, and they had a great defensive coordinator, Jim Johnson. And sadly, Jim Johnson died and the, of cancer, and the Eagles have never had a good team since then. The defensive coordinator was the key to the Eagles' success. That's what got them to the Super Bowl. And the corollary to playing good defense is that good defense leads to good offense because the stocks that you want to avoid, which is how you play good defense, are great short candidates, put candidates. And there's an expression I like to use that it's the stocks you don't own that matter. In a down market in your 401k plan, it's more important to avoid the winners than to pick the uh, avoid the losers than to pick the big winners. So it's the stocks you don't own that matter. And let's look at some examples of playing good defense. Chipotle. Power gauge was bearish all year. Did it know that there was an E. coli crisis coming? Nope. But the fundamentals were stretched, meaning they were too high. Company was touting locally grown ingredients, natural no enhancements, and that's part of the reason they ran into trouble because the suppliers didn't have the quality control that a big chain needs. 
So the stock rallied anyway and started outperforming the market. You had a bullish personality change, but it wasn't supported by the fundamentals. The power gauge was neutral. And then the first problems hit. The stock gapped down to 550, 650 rather, from 700. But amazingly, even after the first E. coli cases, the stock rallied and gave us a money flow sell signal. Now, the money flow sell comes with a stock that has a bearish power gauge rating, goes above the eight period exponential, and then drops below it. Steve Bigelow loves this concept, teaches it every day in his webinar. And wouldn't you have loved to have bought put options on Chipotle at about 610 on the way to 400? Now it's outperforming the market with a bearish power gauge rating and money's coming out of it. So even when it's up like it was 2.5% today, you want to ignore that and look for a spot to sell it. You'll get another money flow sell. You'll get a relative strength sell. But be out of that stock in your long portfolios. Another example of playing good defense, Win Resorts, poster child for a classic bear for two years. Gambling isn't working. Power gauge term bearish at 195. It's not even on this one-year chart. And it's been downhill ever since. You can see it. Can you see the downslope? Someone said, how do you define an uptrend? And I said, well, the easiest way is a series of lower highs and lower lows. It's not rocket science. It's a simple pattern. That's what you've been seeing in Wynn Resorts. Bearish power gauge, underperforming the market. Look at how the institutions were selling the stock over a six-month, seven-month period. Any bids they saw, they hit them. And earnings were negative, and you got beautiful money flow sell signals. And I've highlighted two, one at 100 and one at 70. Because again, it's never too late to sell a stock with bearish fundamentals and bearish technicals. So don't believe the guys on CNBC who periodically were saying, well, maybe the casino stocks are bottoming out or Macau's getting better because Wynn has one resort in Macau and is building another one. Don't believe that stuff. Follow the power gauge and you're going to know everything you need to know and more than the guys on CNBC. So from 100, it dropped to 60 from this sell signal here at 68. It dropped all the way to 50, and it did it again back here in January. Sell signal at 70, and it went to 50 in a week because they had a bad earnings report. Play good defense, turn lemons into lemonade, and buy put options on the weakest stocks you can find based on the Chaikin methodology. Sears, Chaikin was bearish on Sears all through 14. It turned bullish in February. The stock made new highs, hope and a prayer that they could sell off their real estate because as a retailer, they stink. And the retail environment is terrible. So what happened? Well, double top, nice little buy signal in there at 38 on the way to 45, but a double top and it started underperforming the market when it broke the long-term trend line. Patterns repeat over and over. At that point, you want to be out of the stock, particularly when the money flow is weak. Then the power gauge turned bearish in August at a price of about 22. And look where Sears is today. It's 17 and a half. This is a company on the road to ruin. I've been saying for two and a half years, Sears is not going to make it. I don't care what smart hedge fund manager is chairman of the board. It's not going to make it. How do I know that? Power gauge is bearish. It's underperforming the market. And the sell signals are working. You could have bought put options at 23. Could have bought them again at 21 on the way to 17. That's how you make money in volatile markets, by playing good defense and turning good defense into good offense. Now, Apple is on everybody's mind. And they reported earnings on Tuesday after the close. We've been telling people in webinars to get out of Apple on any rallies. The reason is 
it had a bearish personality change, underperforming the market since July. Now, the power gauge turned bullish briefly on August 24th, what I call Market Order Monday, when everybody panicked. And so you could have gotten in at the low for a trade, but it's still outperforming the market, underperforming the market, rather. And check in money flow is negative. Everybody who wants to own Apple already owns it. They put it into the Dow Jones averages in February. It was the kiss of death made a new high in the stock that hasn't been equal. Apple is over-owned. When, when everybody who wants to own a stock owns it, you want to run the other way. And now we see that stealth distribution pattern. Apple rallied up here in late November to the 120 area, and money flow should have gone positive, taken money flow, but it didn't. It stayed red or negative, not like that big mound of green on that first rally. That was your sign, that was your opportunity to get out of Apple at around 118 on the way to 94. And money flow has stayed negative the whole way down. There is no way to know what the bottom in Apple is. Jim Cramer is touting it because he owns it in his charitable trust. Doug Cass, who writes for thestreet.com, right under Jim Cramer says, bear, 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 sell, sell, sell. No reason to own Apple. Bottom line is, underperforming the market with negative check in money flow, you want to sell rallies. Power gauge is not going to go bearish because the company has too much free cash flow, and even if earnings estimates drop from 960 to 8 bucks, there'll be a buyer for Apple, even if it's just on a yield basis. But you don't want to own Apple. There are better places for your money. I'd rather be in Entergy than Apple and in electric utility. So final piece of the webinar, winnings plays during earnings season, long and short. Check and power gauge rating is like a GPS during earnings season. A lot of people are afraid to trade during earnings season because of volatility, but volatility can be your friend in earnings season if you've got an edge and the check and power gauge gives you an edge. So. Here's an oldie. October of 2014, Netflix, before it became the darling and went from 300 all the way to 700 and split seven for one, gave a sell signal ahead of earnings. We made it our bearish stock of the week. People who bought out of the money puts made a ridiculous 50 times on their money. But someone sane who saw that pattern bought three put contracts for 2220 sold them the day after earnings for $93.90 and made a quick $21,500 profit. It was our bearish stock of the week. You can find trades like this. People are finding them in Chaken. Now here are some examples of winning trades during earnings season. Whole Foods. After a big run-up because of one good quarter, after a year of just negative earnings surprises back in 13 and 14, Whole Foods reverted back to form, bearish earnings surprises, gap down here in April of 15, gap down again in July, but in July we had a sell signal, a relative strength sell signal. Now how does that work? doesn't care about the power gauge. It only cares that the stock is underperforming the market, moves above its 21-day exponential, gets overbought, and then drops below it. When it drops below the 21-day exponential with relative strength negative, you get a relative strength sell signal. And these trades last for four to eight weeks. They're great for swing trading. You can buy a longer options position and not worry about premium erosion and weekly options. And Whole Foods is making new lows again. Why? Because the fundamentals are not good and the power gauge is telling you that. Next example, Tiffany, retailing stock. Very dependent on Hong Kong Chinese tourists buying expensive jewelry and handbags. Power gauge rating has been bearish for over a year. Briefly, it started out performing the market. But money flow stayed negative. There's your stealth distribution pattern. Can you see that? If you can see it, type a Y in your chat box, please. 
And I see many of you see that pattern. It's not hard. It's just not hard to spot this if you know what to look for. And then the power gauge went bearish again in August. It started underperforming the market two weeks later. The stock was trading at 88. Look where it is today. Made a new low today at 61. And there was a sell signal ahead of the earnings report, which turned out to be a horrific report. Very bad guidance. People were hoping that Tiffany could be the last bastion of high-end retailing. It wasn't. The stock dropped from 76 all the way down to 60. You can spot these using this very simple three-step discipline. Yelp, my favorite. Sell signal ahead of the earnings in July. Followed the same pattern that it did in January of 15 and then again in April. Patterns repeat on Wall Street. And we happen to get a money flow sell. We made it our bearish stock of the week and the stock dropped 28%. It went sideways. It had a rally. Don't get sucked in. The stock's still underperforming the market and it's making new lows. Today it was down 4% equaling its low, and we got this lovely testimonial from an experienced options trader, <clears throat> netted $17,400 in profit this morning. This is Mike T, who was a Chaken subscriber for only two weeks, got onboarded, learned the system by Joe Bacella, who's on this webinar. He said, I found more success in the past two weeks using Chaken than I've had for the rest of the year. I had my biggest winner of the year today on Yelp. Based on the bearish play of the week, I risked 7,000, netted 17,000. Now, Mike actually sent us his statement from Interactive Brokers showing the positions. He's an experienced options trader. We have an options module called Options Play where you can find these same put ideas without being an experienced options trader. They're good for novices. They're also good for pro professionals. Now, I told you I'd end the webinar with Amazon, and Amazon is quite amazing. Outperforming the market all year with a neutral power gauge because the power gauge does not like the valuations, the fact that Amazon doesn't really earn money if you use gap accounting. And the power gauge turned bearish week of January with negative money flow for the first time in over a year. The stock was trading at around 600. Two weeks ago I said Amazon's my bearish stock of the week but I'd only buy puts if it rallied up to resistance around 600. Instead it went down and then back up again. Amazon at the close of trading today was up 52 points, 9%, ahead of the earnings report that came out after the close. Coming into today, there was a money flow sell signal. So how could Chaikin have helped you make money in Amazon? Well, this week in my weekly market insights, I said buy puts on Amazon ahead of Thursday's earnings report. This is in people's inboxes on the 24th Sunday. Last week's bearish stock of the week, Amazon dropped 4% to 547 before rallying into our resistance targeted in the 59600 area, closing the week at 596. With the market likely to attempt to sustain the rally for a few more days, use strength above 610 to buy put options on Amazon. Amazon reports after the close on Thursday. Today, Amazon got up to 635. It's the first time it broached 610. You could have bought puts today and look what happened. Amazon reported an earnings miss, a revenue miss, and the stock was trading at 561 down from 635. It closed after hours at 550. This is the power of the Chaikin methodology. Are they all going to work? Absolutely not. But 
every earnings season you're going to find in Amazon. And if you follow the discipline, particularly if you use put options where your limited risk is predefined by the cost of the put, you're going to make some outsized returns. Better than 3 to 1 risk reward ratio. So Amazon is typical of what happens when stocks that are on a high wire because of extreme valuations disappoint Wall Street. So now you know my five keys to protecting your portfolio and making trading profits in a volatile market. Particularly important is supercharging your portfolio and your trading profits during earnings season. So we call the product Chaken Analytics, and we think it's your fast track to financial freedom. It's available from both desktop and iPad, and it now includes a new stock screener and options play module that we've licensed that gives you high probability risk reward options ideas. In March, it, in February, we're coming out with an earnings module that analyzes the last year's worth of earnings and gives you access to what the analysts are doing ahead of earnings. Very powerful, very relevant in the earnings season. And at the end of March, power gauge ratings for ETFs. So testimonial sort of sums it up. Thank you for making my life easier. Remember, we started out by talking about information overload and nobody has enough time to analyze all this information. I'm writing to tell you how absolutely incredible Chaken Analytics has become. It started great, but with the options and screener additions, I feel it's absolutely the best product on the market. I've recommended your product to all my investing friends. doesn't get any better than this. We got this testimonial in November when we added the screener to the product. So Chaken Analytics for iPad and desktop is normally $1,950 a year. But we've got a webinar special. We're taking $200 off the price for the candlestick community. Chakenanalytics.com backslash candle. The offer expires Sunday, January 31st. Or you can contact sales at Chakenanalytics.com. <laughs> this is a great value. Now, what do you get with it? You get my weekly market insights. You've already seen the idea on Amazon and Yelp and the group strength and weakness that we do. You get small group tutorials headed up by a team, Joe Pacella heads, to help you learn the system, get set up, so that you can make money like Mike T. did in Yelp just two weeks into Take It. <coughs> Excuse me. Subscriber-only open forums twice a month. You dial in and find out what other people are thinking, ask questions. And finally, my colleague John Schlitz writes the best pre-market commentary I've ever seen. Used to work at Lehman Brothers. I hired him 20 years ago. He's a good friend. He's now with Chaken Analytics. Tells you what's happening in the pre-market. You don't have to be glued to CNBC. Every day it's in your inbox. He's got a stock of the day. Tells you what the foreign markets did overnight, what the futures are doing, and what's likely to happen in the market. So it's it's a complete package. We're we're into customer service that comes bundled in there. And one final testimonial: ten times return in five days. In the five business days I've been using Chaken Analytics, I've paid for the subscription over tenfold. These initial results are nothing short of astounding. Please extend my thanks to the entire Chaken team because this really is a team effort. I built the model. We've got sales, marketing, customer support, customer satisfaction, customer success. We're dedicated to your success. So if you want to make a potential 10 times on your money, we've got a fast action bonus. If you subscribe by midnight tonight, We'll take an additional $100 off the price of Chaken Analytics, reducing the cost to only $1,650. And here's an added bonus. For the first six people who subscribe tonight, 
you'll get a one-on-one -on -one phone consultation with me. In volatile markets, it's important to talk to someone who's been around the block, who's been there before. I'm happy to do it. I love these one-on-ones. I learn a lot. Clients like it. Midnight, any time zone. Flap, doesn't matter. Love to know how you got the name Flap. Give me a buzz or an email. Midnight, your time. And 1650, and the first six people who subscribe, and I see two people have already subscribed, so we're pretty religious about this because my time is limited, as you can imagine. First six people who subscribe get a one-on-one -on -one phone call with me. They usually last a half hour to 40 minutes, and $1,600 is the price point. So with that, I'd like to thank you. I see most of you have stayed on for the whole presentation. We've only had about 20 people drop off. Love the people at Steve Bigelow's organization. They're very patient with me when we have tech problems. So thank you, Steve. Thank everybody, Becky at Bigelow, Jim Cooper. Great opportunity. Question here, is it possible to extract information for an automated strategy? The answer is yes, using the screener. And we normally do a Q&A, but I'm not sure I know the screen sharing well enough. I can try it here if Joe Bacella is on. Becky, if I click on screen share, do you think I'm going to get back to my desktop? Pipe up if you're still there, Becky. I'm going to try it anyway. Start screen share. If it works, fine. If not, just send us your questions and we'll answer them by email. Let's see if I see that message. I'm not seeing it, guys, but you never know. I'm going to say yes just in case it did that. If we get the screen share up, we'll show you the live version of Chaken Analytics. If not, you can call Joe Bacella. Info at shakenanalytics.com. We're going to do the whole monitor here and go into Shaken Analytics and see what we get. No, don't think it worked, guys. I apologize for that. We wanted to do this as bulletproof as possible for the PowerPoint. But by all means, take advantage of this offer, $1,650. There are two slots left for the one-on-one -on -one phone call, and I'd love to talk to you. So thanks again to Steve Bigelow, to Becky, the whole Bigelow Candlestick team. Look forward to doing this again, and have a good evening. Thank you, Mark. Very good stuff. Everybody, this is about as comprehensive accumulation of uh, technical analysis as you're ever going to get. And Mark, uh, Mark's reputation on, on the investment uh, communities is A1. Everybody uses his information because it's very good quality stuff. So with that, Mark, thank you very much, and thank you, everybody, for showing up tonight. We'll see you in the chat rooms.